Good morning. Uh, So there's been a couple of political moves, changes in the Middle East. Um, Firstly, sorry for my Christopher Walken hair today. Anyway, um, firstly, Yemen have uh, declared war on Israel. Um, I hope that's the start of many of the states that do so. Um, I would welcome that if it meant that the scenes that I'm seeing out of Palestine um, stop, personally. Um, I just watched a, a conversation with a couple of geopoliticians and they were talking about what Saudi Arabia has done, which is essentially go to America and say, we will um, allow a normalisation with Israel after this war if that involves a two-state solution with Palestine having a um a separate state now i can understand the i can understand the need for this but i think what what seems to be forgotten by the you know very well known geopoliticians i've just watched is that israel have been geared up and geared up and geared up you know from an individual to a company level to hate the Palestinians, to see them as a scourge on their land, to want to completely destroy them. So what this has done is it's created a kind of existential threat for the Israelis. Now, now obviously, anyone with any, any reasonable mind sense would say, look, if there's going to be a Palestinian state, if that's what's going to happen, even if it is a two-state solution, then the many millions of Palestinians that are unable to return to their homeland at the moment will then be able to return. So it doesn't really matter how many people they kill in Gaza, they're still going to have to deal with a Palestinian state. But I don't think that the Israelis believe... I don't think that they think that deeply about it. I think they believe that if they destroy everyone in Gaza and they take that land, then that will be theirs and they will own it and there's nothing that anyone can do. They don't listen to the UN. I don't think they're listening to the Americans. I think that the it would need to get to the stage where the Americans actually cut the the funding to Israel for them to have any control over this. And I say this with regards... And I don't know why no one else is pointing this out, but I say this with regards to Ukraine. What we saw in Ukraine was the Americans continuing to give weapons to Ukraine, making public and probably private statements that said, look, you will not use these weapons on civilians. You will not use these weapons on civilians and then them going away and doing that because the situation in Ukraine was really tribal and very, very, very similar. The West Ukrainians were taught that the Russian speaking um, you know, ethnic Russians were lower than them, that they weren't quite human, that they deserved to not be there, that they were on their territory, yada, yada, yada. Same thing again and again and again. Now, I believe that Britain and the US created Israel to create destabilization in the region. I think that that is that is how that's gone. But they've they've created a runaway train now, you know, They cannot tell the Israelis what to do, because if they could, the UN would have some impact. You know, um, the the words from from, you know, whoever it is saying, look, you must not do this. You must not attack civilians. You must try and stop civilian casualties. You must allow aid would have some impact, but it's not having any impact. Um, And I think that it's really important to note that that essentially what we've got here now is a is a country, if you can call Israel that, that is in the in the in the bowels of an existential crisis. They realize that what is going to come after this. And Joe Biden did a speech. He said, you know, we need to not go back to the status quo, which I actually agree with. There needs to be a two state solution. He actually said that. So he's obviously listening to some of the actors in the Middle East and realising that they literally cannot fight. They can't fight Iran, Hezbollah and Hamas. They can't do that, you know. So I think the problem that we're going to find now is that Israel are going to be determined to pull not just the Arab world, but now also the Americans into a deeper war. And they will probably do that by having some sort of false flag operation, which will 
be made out to look like Iran and will actually result in the, the downing of one of these sitting duck aircraft carriers. Or, you know, there's going to be some retaliation, I, I, I think. And I think that the longer this goes on, and we have to remember, these people are actually like like starving and uh, to death now. So the longer this goes on, the more the, the deep humanitarian crisis, even aside from the bombing, deepens which makes it all the worse. But the longer this goes on, the more we're going to see that the Israelis are not going to listen to what their sponsors are saying in exactly the same way that the Ukrainians did. The Americans said, we're giving you these armoured vehicles, we're giving you these tanks, we're giving you this, and you are not to use them to attack civilians. So what did they do? They drove them into Belgorod. They used specifically American supplied tanks, what, three days after they were told not to attack civilians for the sole purpose of attacking civilians. And they've done that because they have been created in this image as better than their, um, you know, their peers, essentially. The Israelis consider themselves to be better than the Palestinians. They consider Palestinian life to mean less than Israeli life. And this is very, very evident. It's exactly the same with Ukraine. And that really, really worries me because I think everything is so tentative. Everything is so close. It would just take, a, 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 you know, a, a, a mistake or a, an act of, de, of, of great um, uh, desperation for this situation to escalate in a way that is, is going to invariably cause great harm. Now, I've actually been very saddened by the Saudis and what they've done, but hearing that they've gone to America and made it clear that the only way that they will normalise um, relations with Israel is with a Palestinian statehood, that, uh, you know, that's made me think that they're, they are actually trying to be the diplomats that we actually need in this situation, because, you know, if they can't support, if the Americans can't support a situation where the Saudis and the um, the Israelis have at least a tentative agreement with each other, it doesn't work anymore. You know, there's too many enemies around. Um, I think... I'm struggling because I'm very, very, very emotionally invested in this. And I think that that's the correct mindset to have, to be honest. But fundamentally, this, you know, it's going to happen. There is going to be a two-state solution. We are going to see a situation very, very soon where um, the Palestinians, whether the ones that are are in Palestine now or the ones that are living outside of Palestine now, are going to get a two-state solution because the Arab world on all sides has said that that is essential. But that is the last thing that the Israelis want. So now for them, this is existential. Whereas before it was, uh, you know, a continued land grab, that's all gone. If there's a two-state solution, the land grabs, the paying paedophiles to come and live in, Palestinian homes and, you know, and all of that, that's all gone. That cannot happen anymore if the UN two-state solution is implemented. And that's not just something that's being called for by the Arab world. It's actually now something that's being called for by the Americans as well. Um, and I worry what this barbaric, extremist, hyper-religious sect is going to do in response to that Israel's just become a major threat to the West. I said this about Ukraine, you know, if Ukraine shift and we've given them uh, 200 billions worth of equipment at the expense of our own war stocks, suddenly they are a huge threat to the West. Israel is that times 10. And I think we should all be very, very, very aware of that. The only thing that can happen now is a ceasefire, is an explanation to uh, to Israel that this is going to happen whether they like it or not, and to try and mitigate the amount of casualties that happen on the way. 
It's so worrying. God bless Palestine.